Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. Today we have Scott Woods, our technical communication product manager, and Scott's in charge of helping customers and prospects find the best way to create technical documentation. And you'll see a wide range of examples of service, installation manuals, as well as marketing quality rendered images. Scott's been with us for nearly 12 years, and prior to joining Hawkridge, he held a variety of positions, including technical writer and 3D animator. And these are the same roles he helps people find better, faster ways to get their jobs done today. In his spare time, he enjoys 3D printing, brewing beer, and photography. Well, that's quite the pedigree that gives Scott a great perspective on how to best utilize these tools to improve technical communication workflows. Scott, take it away. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Tim. Yeah, so today we're gonna to cover three topics. So we'll keep it uh, to the point and educational here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate procedural views inside of SOLIDWORKS. They're gonna take those views, we're gonna bring them into a SOLIDWORKS motion study in order to create a visualized animation. So it's gonna go into the motion study and then import into visualize for that animation. Then we're gonna take those views that we made inside of SOLIDWORKS, the exploded views, and bring those directly into Composer. Uh, they can be added to the timeline and then from there develop the, the animation as well. Uh, keep in mind that this uh, presentation is for repurposing these views for animation, but they don't have to be animation. Once we get this content into the other applications, we can use it for various other purposes. Uh, we're just gonna focus on animation today. Let's go ahead and just talk about what the difference is between these two applications before we get into the the content of the presentation. So starting off with Composer. So Composer is really designed to be technical. It has that you know step-by-step -step look and feel. It's not photo rendered like you'd see in Visualize. It is really just to create quick and easy uh, procedural documentation. So looking at this PDF here is a good example of what Composer does. We have an exploded view. Uh, with the parts, you know, all pulled apart, we have exploded lines, we've got balloons, build materials, and tools to get the part, uh, tools to, you know, create this assembly, put this together. Then we have some previews up at the top right showing what it's going to look like after we get, we, we're finished. Going on to the next page, it, this is the first step of the process. We've got some parts light up, they're going to be assembled. Then we're going to have addition, a couple additional parts light up, they're going to be assembled. And then we have a preview up in the corner again to show us what that's going to look like. And so really in a nutshell, that's Composer. Going over to Visualize, uh, this is going away from the, the tech comms kind of world into marketing. And this is for that photorealism rendering. So we have this, this truck, right? And this is the visualized rendering. And it's going to show um, what... Uh, you know, what this guy's gonna look like after it's, it's been ray traced photorealism rendered quality. And this is a static image, but Visualize can do a lot more than that. It can do animation, which we're gonna be covering today. Uh, here's a quick little rotational animation video. Uh, this is an MP4, but we could render this out as an interactive uh, animation as well. So somebody could go to your website, click on it, rotate, put on a VR headset, see it rotate, things like that. So some really cool stuff out of Visualize. But really just to draw a line in the sand between the two, technical visual assets and photorealism assets. Okay, so going back to our presentation here. So just to start off, um, you know, I, I am a amateur photographer. Uh, I did take this photo last night. Right now we have a super moon uh, going on. It's called a pink moon. And if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, go outside at night uh, in the next couple of nights. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. So why am I even talking about photography? Well, just an analogy for repurposing um, items that you create or buy or whatever it is. And uh, it would be nice if we could do this more in our lives to, to save time and money. So I, I shoot with Nikon and I have a full lineup of lenses, you know, a lot of money invested into that. But my point here is, is that I didn't always use Nikon. I used to use Canon. And when I used Canon, I had a whole lineup of lenses as well. Before that, I had Fujitsu and I had all of their equipment. And uh, now I'm getting into these, what's called moment lenses. It's for your cell phone. <laughs> cool. Uh, they're really cool. They're really good lenses. Uh, but again, that's additional things you have to buy, which is money. Time is money. Everything is money. Now, uh, going into this 
what we want to talk about today is actually repurposing something. So hopefully I can give you something small uh, that you can take away from this and just be like, yep, I repurposed that and it made my life a little bit better. So we're going to take those exploded views out of SOLIDWORKS, bring them into Visualize via Motion Steady. And we're also going to take those exact same uh, exploded views, bring them into Composer to create the uh, animation as well. And we can do additional stuff with it and we will. I'll show you. A uh, few other little things we can do once we get inside these softwares. Okay, so why do we need three different animation programs? We got our visualize photorealism rendering uh, animation. We have our composer, very technical looking animation. But then we also have a animation program built right into SOLIDWORKS. And that's where the motion study comes from. And really why is because they're for three different groups for three different purposes. So the motion study is built into SOLIDWORKS. That's going to be the tool that engineering uses. So that animation program is really built for the engineer. It's going to have all of the relations, the mates. Um, we can do stuff like gravity and some cool stuff, uh, cool simulation stuff within that built within SOLIDWORKS. Now the visualized portion of the animation, that's going to be for marketing purposes, that real high quality photo realism rendering. Then we have the composer one, which is going to be our procedural step-by-step -step technical rendering. So three different purposes, three different applications. Okay, let's go on to the first step of the process here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up SOLIDWORKS. Uh, within SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to go through and create that step-by-step exploded view. And then we're going to take, uh, it's actually a series of views. Um, it's called an exploded view. It's a set of views. And we're going to take that, bring it into the SOLIDWORKS motion study via the animation wizard, and then take that animation, bring it into SOLIDWORKS professional. So just keep in mind, uh, there is a standard, so, I'm sorry, SOLIDWORKS visualized professional. There is a standard visualized software. There's a professional visualized software. There's quite a few differences between them. The easiest way to just define that line where they separate is that Visualize makes static imagery and Visualize Professional makes anything move. So if it moves, it's gonna be professional. So animation is professional. Then we're gonna output the video animation. Okay, let's pop over to SOLIDWORKS. And here we see that, uh, you know, I have a, a fairly detailed SOLIDWORKS model, you know, sub-assemblies, parts. There's, you know, quite a, quite a bit going on here. So everything that makes Solid SOLIDWORKS assembly is what we have going on. So we go to the configuration manager, and here I want to take my assembly and I'm going to explode it using an exploded step. So to do that, we just go and we say new exploded view, and we're going to do step one. I want to zoom out a little bit. Let's bring it down. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space here because I want to be able to pull things out and I want to be able to put them. Um, a little bit above the, where the truck is. So there is a little checkbox here, a little option I want to bring attention to because this is important. We have a uh, select subassembly parts. So with that selected, when I select items, it will select the components. If you turn it off, it's going to select the subassemblies. So in this case, I want to select the shell, which is a subassembly. I'll grab that and we'll just move it up. Something like that. And so now that we've taken that whole subassembly, transferred it up, I see that there's a couple other little assemblies that I also want to group with that guy there. So by clicking on them on screen, just like that, it's going to select them, it's going to move them up, and now I have my, my grouping of assemblies here. Now another important step is make sure you click done. When you click done, that ends that step and it starts the next step. And so now, uh, I want to show a couple different ways of doing this. So I want to select some subassembly components. So I'm going to select them here. I could select them on screen. But I also want to show this pop down here. So by bringing down this uh, this tree, I can go down and I can say, oh, there's the cab floor subassembly. That's going to select all the parts within that subassembly there, instead of selecting the whole subassembly, which would be basically the whole chassis. And so with that, we'll take it, we'll move it up, something like that. Now I want to click done to go to the next step. But let's say I, I forget to do that, which is going to happen. 
right? We all make mistakes. So let's say I forget to, to click done and I go here and I say, oh, next step is gonna be gearbox assembly. Oh no, it, it grouped it with that, it moved it up the same amount, not what I wanted. So, um, but I can come over here and I can remove it. So I just find the, the gearbox, say so delete. So I'm deleting it out of that grouping. Now I click done. Now it moves on to the next step. So now when I grab the gearbox assembly, I can move it up and do something like that. Okay, and then done. Now, like I said, I wanna show a couple of different ways of doing this. So the next method is going to be selecting all the internal parts within this uh, the sub assembly, a little, sh you know, like there's a shell here. I wanna click all the parts inside and move them out. So sometimes the easiest way to do that is to select everything and then deselect what you don't want. So if I go through here and I have my select sub, sub assembly parts so I can click these parts and I select them, I'm gonna select everything. Move it out like that. Now I can deselect what I don't want or unselect. So they're all in this grouping and I could go through this grouping here and I could remove the ones I don't want or I could just click on them on screen and that's gonna remove them from that list. So let's get the shell out of there. There's some screws and some nuts. We'll click on those. Now let's just select the ones on top here. Just like that. There's a couple more down at the bottom, but we'll, we'll call that good for now. Okay, so I have my grouping now that I pulled out of that shell, and I'm gonna say done. And now the last method that we're gonna show here is gonna just be how we click on parts and select them to move them out. So I'm gonna select on a component, click that guy, grab my arrow, move it out, one part. And now if I select another component, it moves it out with that, so it's gonna group it together. Next, next, next. And this is probably my, my favorite way, our most preferred way of selecting components. Makes it easy. But if you have a ton of them, sometimes it's easier to select them in the list and move them and, and move stuff back you don't want. Um, but if you just have you know, like maybe four or five parts to select, it makes it easy just to click them on screen. And I'm gonna hit done. Now I'm gonna hit the little checkbox, save. We're gonna complete that. And now I have an exploded view. And I can animate this. So if I animate the, the collapse, let's say, we'll put it back together. Right now I have this playing on forwards in reverse. So it's just gonna start, you know, just pull it apart, put it back together. And it's just a basically a preview. So like, yep, that's exactly the animation I'm looking for. Those are my exploded steps and we're good to go. Okay, so now I want to bring those steps into visualize. Now, before I do that, there is a little, um, I guess, uh, one additional process we have to do before that can happen. So let's go ahead and go to the motion study. And I have a brand new motion study here. And I want to bring the exploded view into the motion study. So if you right click in the motion study, we have what's called the animation wizard. So a nice little wizard, you can create a, a 3D rotatable animation, um, just like we've seen at the, the visualize preview, preview with that tabletop animation, that's what it would make. Or we could say, hey, we're gonna pull this guy apart or put it together. I'm gonna do the explode, and I'm gonna use the motion study to do that. So let's say duration five seconds, sounds good. I wanna start at zero, because I wanna start at the beginning of the timeline. And hit finish, and that's all you gotta do. And from there, it takes that motion study we just made, and it makes an animation with it. Let me zoom out so we can see what's going on. So something like that. Okay, now I wanna bring that into Visualize. And how that's done is, uh, and again, this is gonna be Visualize Professional, but we have our Visualize add-in built right into SolidWorks, and we have some options up here. So let me just talk about what these options do. So the export simple, that would bring the 3D model into Visualize with no animation. Uh, that's what you would do with like Visualize Standard. The Export Advanced is going to bring all the models and the timeline, those all those keyframes, into Visualize for the animation. The Save Advanced, this would save a SolidWorks assembly with the motion study and everything Visualize needs inside that assembly, and you can put that somewhere else. So you can just bring that right into to Visualize at any time, or maybe merge it with another project or something that's going on. So here, I'd want to say Export Advanced, 
uh, say my motion study, and then say, okay. And that would pop into visualize, just like that. And just for, you know, time saving here, we, uh, I already had this preloaded, but I haven't done anything with it. This is about a two minute process to go from SOLIDWORKS to visualize, and you would get exactly this. And let me just talk about the interface a little bit here within Visualize. So this is, this is Visualize Professional that I've now converted this motion study over to. We look at it, we have the entire uh, animation tree, just like, uh, I'm sorry, timeline, just like it was inside of SOLIDWORKS. If I go to my cameras, it brings over my default cameras from SOLIDWORKS. So we have a SOLIDWORKS viewport, look like we had another default camera within there. Uh, if I had multiple cameras inside of SOLIDWORKS, those all would have come over into Visualize and we could access them here. But we could even uh, create an additional camera and maybe even add that to the timeline and do some really cool stuff here. So to do that, the easiest way is to duplicate any camera that's already here. It's just a quick, easy way. You can also right click and say new camera, that will do it too. But I'm gonna double click that camera to activate it. And you'll see that because I, I came over from SOLIDWORKS, uh, my aspect ratio isn't quite what I wanted because SOLIDWORKS is basically set up for an all, you know, it's for print. It's for, you know, uh, your viewport ratio, which is eight and a half by 11. Uh, I want to change that to 16 by nine. That'd be HD video. You can see my borders for my aspect ratio for my camera have changed just like that. Now I can go ahead and say, that I want to add some perspective here. And there is some perspective already, but maybe we want to add a little bit of drama to this. So we can really add, you know, maybe not that much drama. Let's do that. Just to get a nice like perspective look, because this is going to be a you know, like a marketing style animation. So just like that. So I've made my camera. Now I want to take my camera and add it to my animation so I can animate it later. And that's just done by right clicking that keyframe. Takes, a, takes about 30 seconds here to add that as the process. And then once it's in the uh, timeline, we have full control over uh, doing fly throughs and camera rotations. We can add multiple cameras so we can switch uh, during the animation, switch what camera we're looking at of that sort of thing. And there's my new camera keyframe there. Let's put a pin in that. We'll come right back to it. Uh, before I do my camera adjustments, let's adjust the appearances and the environment. So going over to the libraries, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, just pop into like one of these uh, these paint like libraries. So this is material for paint, and uh, Visualize comes with all sorts of materials for metals and paints and rubbers and wood and all kinds of stuff. But here, uh, let's go ahead and say that you know we want to keep. Let's say we want to keep the. Uh, actually, let me zoom in a little bit here. Why not? All right, so something like that. Maybe we wanted to keep the Hawkridge uh, logo and the color of the door, but perhaps the blue, maybe the shell, maybe we'll change that. So if I grab any of these paint jobs and just drag it in, I can color that and it's that easy. Um, also, I'm looking here at a lot of this white. So if an appearance is applied inside of SOLIDWORKS, that will come over to, compo to visualize. Uh, these parts just have no appearances at all. So they just come in as just real generic white because Software doesn't know what to do with them. And the way that Visualize is set up is actually pretty slick. So if I select one of these, it will tell me what in my appearances tab, it will tell me what appearance that is. And so what I can do, and that's uh, that goes for quite a few of these components. So what I can do is I can go to my libraries and I can say, well, let's go to like a metal, maybe Chrome, and I'll add Chrome to one of these components. Let's say that's one there. Now when I go back to my appearances and I click on that part, I can see what's applied, which is this Chrome. I can copy that. So we're just gonna copy that appearance. And then on any of these other ones that are kind of that real plain white, select them and I can overwrite, let's uh, go ahead and paste that or assign that appearance. That, and so all of those colors that were just that white is now that Chrome. And so it's a real quick and easy way of mass coloring all the components. So I don't have to keep dragging and dropping for every single part and it just take too long. Okay, so let's go back to our libraries and I want to add an environment. Now you'll see when I add an environment, let's do, uh, 
I do like this guy here. It's like a California road or something. It's just one of the environmental scenes here. You'll see that the lighting on the truck has changed, but the background hasn't changed. And if I rotate the model, you can kind of see those reflections happening in the truck, in the chrome. So what's, what it's doing is it's taking the lighting and the image for the reflection from that environment onto my, my truck here, just like that. And, but it's not taking the background because I'm using what's called a backplate. So you'll see this in Visualize. It's kind of a standard thing. It, it happens by default. Um, if you right click, go to the properties for the backplate, you can toggle that off. And then you can use the background from that environment, just like that. So I can place this truck on a dirt road and in a desert or something like that, and I can, I can utilize that. If I wanted to use the reflections from the environment and not the background image, then we can easily do that from scenes and just say, hey, we want to use the color, and it's going to be white, and just like that. And so now we've, we've colored our model. We have a white background, but we saw the reflections in the, in the truck there. Okay, let's do one last thing before we wrap this guy up. We got, uh, we got a camera that we added down at the timeline. And so now uh, I got this, this, this animation that came over from, from SOLIDWORKS. And you'll see that, you know, if I just leave the camera where it's at right now, I'm gonna lose all the parts because they're gonna go off screen. So let's say maybe about right here, we want to start moving the camera. So we lock it down, scrub it forward just a hair, and we're going to go ahead, zoom out, and take a look at what is going on with that guy. So just until we can see it kind of in frame, and it automatically create, carried a keyframe. It's always good to scrub that back just to take a look at what the camera is doing. So there we go, it's staying still, zooms out, and then let's just keep it right here where it's at until about right there. So we'll lock the camera, go forward, and then zoom in to what is going on at that point there. And we'll lock it again. Oh, it already had a keyframe, so it didn't have to. Okay, and that's it. So it zooms out, looks in, goes in, boom. And we have our animation. You know, look at this and it's kind of wobbly. That's be because uh, the transition from out, in and out of each one of these keyframes, we have this nice little handy ease in, ease out for the tension. And if I made that like a flat in, and flat out, it'll remove that wobble. I get asked that all the time. You'll see now it's nice smooth transitions, just like that, probably what you were expecting to see. And that's just the flat in and out for the keyframes there. Okay, well, let's take a look at the little example here. So we got, um, uh, yeah, before we move on, let me show what that final rendering looks like. So we have this guy here. And that's basically, this was basically the same steps. I have a couple more appearances on there, but it's a quick rendering out of Visualize and what the end product's gonna look like. So something like that. Okay, so a little recap of what we just did is we created some exploded views within SolidWorks from the configuration, just right click, new exploded view. Um, and you know, those exploded views, they come directly into Composer. So, you know, we, we do need an additional step to bring them into Visualize, but with Composer, they're right there. And we could, that's gonna be the next process we're gonna do is bring those into to Composer. And then we use the animation wizard to take those exploded views, um, exploded steps to uh, to bring that into the motion study of SOLIDWORKS and then export to the Visualize Pro plugin. We did some modifications in Visualize Pro. So we did the, uh, the appearances and the environment. We, we did some timeline modifications, created a camera, brought that down, moved it around, and then published the video like that. Okay, so the next process is Composer. So we're gonna do something similar but we, we don't have to do the motion study. We can skip that part altogether. So we're gonna, it would still be the same process of creating those exploded steps inside of SOLIDWORKS. We won't redo that, we've already done that. We're gonna take those, bring them into Composer, and then do a little bit of modification on the timeline and produce a video. So pop over to Composer, and let's show how that sounds. So again, you know, we have this preloaded, but nothing has been done in Composer. Timeline is blank. We have our views that came over from SOLIDWORKS and that's it. 
Uh, this was about an eight minute process, so that's why we're not showing it live here. But if I wanted to, I go file open, navigate to the SolidWorks files, in this case it'd be right here. There's some basic options on how we want to import this. Um, there's some refinement for the quality, and then we have the choice of what configuration to bring in. I say open, hit open, and that will import the SolidWorks models into Composer along with all the exploded views, and we can use them. So when I double click them, you'll see how it's gonna translate from step to step. And so far, nothing has been done inside of Composer. It's just repurposing what we've already done inside of SolidWorks. So granted, you could absolutely do all of these steps in Composer without importing from SolidWorks, of course, but if you've already done it there, we can repurpose it here. Okay, uh, now I want to switch over to my animation and I want to start bringing these, these steps, these views, into my Composer animation timeline. And I have a little strategy of what I use to do this, and I'll show you what that is. So what I do is I drag in each one of these views, and I'll do it twice. And this just is kind of the go-to default process I've made, because I think it, yeah, I get the best results. And the reason why I bring one in twice, each one in twice, in just about a second apart from each other, is because it creates these nice pauses. So in between the, uh, the camera angles, the camera will stop, it will move to the location for that view, it will pause for a second, and then it will move to the next one. And that prevents, if you've ever seen those animations, of, I'm sure everybody has seen that where you watch and it just starts moving right away and the camera is going all over the place and parts are flying around, and you're like, oh, what the, what the heck just happened? That's <laughs> too much was going on. Well, what this will do is it'll create pauses in between them, so as things move, it stops, moves, stops, move stops like that so it creates those nice pauses now when you drag and drop anything from the views into the timeline it copies everything so you'll see that it actually copied keys for every single part their color the position the angle of the camera we have a lot of stuff here that we probably don't need and especially we don't need all these cameras so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select just the cameras by highlighting them here and i'm going to delete them and so what that will do is it will keep just the one camera angle for the entire timeline. And now we have the same problem that we had in Visualite, right, where uh, we lose the parts because they go off of, out of frame. And so we're going to do the exact same thing in Composer we did in Visualize. So we come here and say, well, maybe at about this part time here, this camera starts moving. I'll create a camera, camera key, zoom out, and you'll see it it's really is that very similar process where we're just going to zoom out. We see the, the truck pop, so we can capture it all here. Capture that. And we're going to scrub the, the camera, scrub the timeline, I'm sorry, until we need to move the camera, maybe about right here. So we're create a camera key, go forward a little bit, zoom in, and create another camera key here. Just like that. And Grab it back just to make sure everything looks good. And there we go. And then maybe at this point here, let's get a little fancy, a little bit maybe at this point here, we'll create a camera, we'll go forward a little bit, and we'll just rotate. Maybe take another angle at this, right, that. Okay, then we take, rewind the whole thing, take a look at what's going on, and we see our animation. Just like that. Now, if we wanted to add a couple more things inside of Composer, um, you know, because we can use these views for anything. We can create a full set of assembly instructions in our views here, some oper an operation manual, plus this animation for additional, you know, hey, watch this video to remove this thing or whatever it is. It's a little bit more complicated than we can show in some steps. So we can kind of reuse, or we can reuse the, the exploded views of the animation, but then we can also reuse them for procedural steps within Composer, just in the, the views as well. Um, one other thing I'd like to add here is just add one additional element within Composer. What I did here is I turned off the cameras by clicking that key, so I can come in here and I can move things around without, uh, without the camera being adjusted. So let's say that I wanted to throw an arrow on here and say, hey, we're gonna move this top, it's gonna go up. 
So if I go to author, arrow, and I'm holding down Alt, I'm just gonna select any linear edge. Let's select that guy there and throw an arrow on there, just like that. And just that easy, just by creating the arrow, Composer did a few things automatically. It placed the arrow, it also placed another key in here for the arrow to appear and then move up or appear and fade in just like that. Now, if I take that key and I move it back, the arrow is going to come and it's going to start appearing earlier and it's actually attached to that top, so it's going to move with it just like that. You can do some really cool stuff. And then I can do a fade out um, little feature here too. I can say, hey, let's fade out over a certain amount of time, show the camera, rewind it. Last go here, this guy's gonna pop up and we'll see that arrow move with it, just like that. And the arrow's gonna fade out. So when you're making procedural animations, you can add those little 2D things like annotations and arrows and exploded lines. It helps tell the story. So it's not just parts moving. We get that 2D feedback as well, saying, hey, we're gonna rotate this three times or whatever it is. Cool. And then from here, we would save it out as a video. So workshops, video, plug in our resolution, video save as, MP4, just like out of Visualize. Cool, so going back to And we're going back to our PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and show that Composer video final rendering as well. There we go, so this is the MP4 output. So you can see, basically that same animation that was from Visualize, but it's not photo rendering animation. It is technical animation. It's for a completely different purpose. Okay, a little re recap. Uh, we took those exploded views from SolidWorks imported them into Composer. Then by dragging those views into the timeline, we added them to the timeline. We did some timeline modifications uh, with the camera that added the arrow and then published out as a video. So the key takeaways here, we generate the procedural views inside of SolidWorks via exploded views. Uh, also keep in mind for Composer, it brings in any custom views. So even in the viewport, if you hit spacebar, it's a hot, it's a shortcut key to pop up your uh, uh, your views and you create a custom view, that view will also come into Composer. So little, little tip there. Then we converted the uh, views into the motion study using the, the, uh, the animation rendering that was for visualize. So right click, motion study, um, I'm sorry, animation wizard. Um, what's called animation wizard to then bring in those those exploited view steps create the animation and then use the visualize add-in to then export to visualize pro for the final rendering we took those same exploded view steps brought them directly into composer there's no fancy things needed no fancy steps needed to get that done you just composer file open and bring in the solvers assembly and there we go and we got it inside of composer Okay, so um, with that, if you would like more information, um, go ahead and contact us. And here's some contact information here. And thank you for attending. Mm -hmm.